This is the BBC Third programme. Tonight we're broadcasting from the Edinburgh Festival a performance of Haydn's opera Orfeo ed Euridice, written to a libretto by Carlo Francesco Badini. This relay will also be heard by listeners in Denmark, Sweden, Hungary, Czechoslovakia, Holland and Germany. The following introduction has been written by Lionel Salter. Haydn wrote his Orfeo ed Euridice, or as it was alternatively called, L'Anima del Filosofo, for his first visit to London in 1791. It had been commissioned by Sir John Gallini, a former solo dancer who was then director of the Italian opera at the King's Theatre Haymarket. But though arrangements for its production were at once put in hand, only 40 bars had been played at the first rehearsal when news arrived that George III had suddenly withdrawn the royal patent from Gallini, and the opera was therefore abandoned. It was never performed, and no libretto was published. As a result, it was believed until quite recently that the score had been left unfinished. But collation of the autograph and a copy found in Budapest established that in fact the opera is essentially complete, though there may be some ballet music missing. Orfeo emerges as a typically Italian opera seria of the late 18th century. In spite of the subject matter, Haydn's treatment of the story is largely unaffected by the reforms of Gluck. Most of the action unfolds slowly in a stream of long and sumptuous solo arias. The longest and most sumptuous of all, that of the genius in Act Three, is transferred in this production to the role of Euridice. The chorus plays a considerable part in Orfeo, and the orchestra is for Haydn quite a large one comprising two flutes, two oboes, two cor anglais, which in the last few bars of Euridice's death scene are allotted low notes right off the instrument. Two clarinets, two bassoons, two horns, two trumpets, two trombones, timpani, harp and strings. The overture is connected thematically with the opera and was first performed as a separate piece two years later on Haydn's second London visit. The Princess Euridice, daughter of King Creonte, has been promised in marriage to Arideo, whom she detests. Fleeing in desperation from his unwelcome attentions, she is about to plunge into a dense forest. The chorus anxiously warns her of the dangers which lie therein, but Euridice, likening her laments to those of the nightingale, prefers to be captured by the forest savages rather than return to the fate which awaits her. She is in fact seized by the inhabitants of the forest. But the chorus calls for help and Orfeo appears, seizes his lyre and sings so movingly of his love for Euridice that the savages are appeased and let her go. The lovers embrace and make their way back to the palace while the chorus praises the power of music. Meanwhile, the king has become anxious over his daughter's disappearance. He learns that Orfeo has rescued her and resigns himself to accept the thought that the lovers should be allowed to marry, even though this means breaking his word to Arideo. Man, he concludes, cannot order his destiny. When Orfeo and Euridice appear, he gives them his blessing and they sing a long and rapturous love duet. Act two finds Orfeo and Euridice married and surrounded by cupids who sing of the joys of true love. A terrifying noise interrupts the festivities. Orfeo goes off to investigate, and while he's away, a party of Arideo's men attempts to carry Euridice off. She starts to run, but treads upon a poisonous snake, which bites her foot, and she dies, lamenting that she will not see her beloved Orfeo again. When he returns, he finds her lifeless body and gives vent to the agony of his despair in a long restative and aria. Creonte learns of his daughter's death and swears vengeance on Arideo. This is the cast in Acts 1 and 2 in order of singing. Euridice, Joan Sutherland. Orfeo, Nicolai Geda. Creonte, Spiro Malas. Attendant serving Creonte, Malcolm King, and a captain serving Arideo, John Graham. 
with the Scottish Opera Chorus, Chorus Master Arthur Oldham, and the Scottish National Orchestra, leader Sam Ball. Harpsichord Continuo is played by John Beckett. The opera is conducted by Richard Bonning.
mio canto i giorni tuoi salvai con gli amorosi rai coi tuoi dolci sorrisi coi cari amplessi tuoi bella e uridice tu rendi a pieno l'anima mia felice Chi sedermi dove te mia figlia adorata dagli manei dell'oriato arrideo e ure dice fuggendo in tenebrose selve ove dimora solgente selvaggia sventurata in oltrassi stavan costori intenti di innocente donzella a far sull'altare delle furie Orrido il seppio, quando fortuno giunse il cantor divin, l'amico Orfeo, o suoi canori accenti, il pelalme impietosite, desto pietare, e ti salvò la figlia. Non ti ascolto, la mia real promessa, Adalileo, servaglio por vorre, ma il destino resisti ai voler miei.
nel mondo esser non lice, che il sole, il solo getto, degno del nostro affetto, or esso in te un mio bene raddoppia sì, che sono due soli i tuoi bei lumi, finché sei in me. Thank <laughs> you. 
cerca del mio cor la pace
Benice, signor, da Rineo fuggendo. Morì. Che ascolto è verso fatto? L'agnosi che di fere tu gli mancasti, e con orribile faccia il trono e i giorni tuoi minaccia. Vieni in difesa mia, tu è stacciato. In un sol colpo ben sopra il superbo reo nemico. Se io ne più saggio con il orgoglio e vendicar l'oltraggio. That is the end of Act Two of Haydn's opera Orfeo e Eurydice. The introduction to Acts Three and Four will follow in about 21 minutes. This is the BBC third program. We come now to the second part of Haydn's opera Orfeo e Eurydice, which we're relaying from the Edinburgh Festival. The third act opens with Orfeo, Creonte, and the chorus lamenting by Eurydice's grave. Orfeo cannot be consoled. His life is dark forever. Creonte, although profoundly affected, tries to persuade him not to abandon himself entirely to despair. Life without hope, he declares, is no life at all. Orfeo decides to consult the Sibyl and descends to her shrine, which is in a rocky cleft. A spirit appears and urges him not to abandon hope. She will escort him down to Hades as his guardian genius. He sees a vision of Eurydice. In a brilliant aria, she tells him that if his constancy is strong enough, he can descend into the underworld and win her back. Orfeo declares that no terror will daunt him and follows the genius down into the depths of the cleft. The chorus praises the clemency of the gods. 
At the start of Act Four, Orfeo and his spirit guide have reached the River Lethe, where the souls of the damned are heard bewailing their lot. They attempt to set foot in Charon's boat, but a chorus of furies prevents them and bids Orfeo despair. His courage softens even their hearts, however, and they beg their master, Plutone, to have mercy on him. The god agrees to release Euridice, and there is a chorus of rejoicing. But the spirit reminds Orfeo that he must not look on his wife's face until they've reached the upper world again. Euridice does not know of this condition, and in her joy at the reunion, lifts her veil and gazes lovingly at him. He turns to face her, and all is lost. Euridice is led away by the Furies, the spirit disappears, and Orfeo once more is left to lament his fate. We next see him wandering disconsolately by the seashore. A group of Bacantes enters, inviting Orfeo to join their revels. But in his despair, he repels them and swears to renounce the female sex forever. Enraged by his refusal, the Bacantes give him a cup of poison, telling him it is Lethean water that will enable him to forget the past. He drinks it and dies in agony. The Bacantes then set sail for the Isles of Love, but a huge storm arises. The sea overwhelms their boat and drowns them, and the body of Orfeo is borne away upon the waves to find rest on the island of Lesbos. Now here is the cast in Acts 3 and 4 in order of singing. Orfeo, Nicolai Geda, Creonte, Spiro Malas, Genius, Mary O'Brien, Euridice, Joan Sutherland, and Plutone, Simon Gilbert. With the Scottish Opera Chorus and the Scottish National Orchestra. Conducted by Richard Bonning.
venerata Sibilla, tu che nel ciel servi gli arcani in seno, dimmi dove la sposa è Euridice, l'anima mia.
insomma si chiede, apria che l'amorosa mia costanza, che il mio ardor m'abbandoni, si spegnerà le stelle, diverrà il sol di cielo, le tenebre splendenti, oscure il cielo. Dopo avendo le omeni dispietate, il pianto eterno, la rota, il sasso, il baratro,
That is the end of Haydn's opera Orfeo ed Eurydice, which was relayed from the Edinburgh Festival. This was the cast Eurydice, Joan Sutherland, Orfeo, Nikolai Geda, Creonte, Spiro Malas, Genius, Mary O'Brien, Crutone, Simon Gilbert, Attendant, Malcolm King, and Captain, John Graham.
with the Scottish Opera Chorus, Chorus Master Arthur Oldham, and the Scottish National Orchestra, leader Sam Ball. Harpsichord Continuo was played by John Beckett. The opera was conducted by Richard Bonney and produced by Rudolf Hartmann. The introductions were written by Lionel Salter.